Broker and Quisto Real Estate here on our TNT episode 658, and we have a special guest, Lee Warren, with Prospect Inspectors. Lee is a longtime inspector, and you know, we have served on the board together at CCAR at our local association, and Lee does tons of volunteering and gives back in so many ways to his to the industry. So also, if you guys haven't, uh, are not following Lee on social media, I invite you to do that because he has the craziest pictures sometimes and gives tons of great information that is really helpful. So he kind of makes it fun for us, right? I try. So, I do yeah. like it. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit. We talked about how you give back so much. Just as of today, <laughs> tell me how many things, how many committees that you're serving on. Well, I sit on the board of directors for the Collin mm -hmm. County Association of Realtors. I sit on the board for the North Texas Realtors in Action Foundation, uh, which is the 501c3 nonprofit organization um, that started through CCR. Mm -hmm. um, I am the chair of the inspector committee uh, for the Texas Real Estate Commission. I've been on that committee for nine years. I have three more to go. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, they're six-year appointments. Oh wow, yeah. I didn't know so that. I, and I'm in my second term, so I'm halfway through my second term, but I am currently the chair of that. Um, and I am the chair of the property management committee for Texas Realtors. Uh, I also sit on professional standards for uh, Texas Realtors as well, and, and a few other committees here and there. So. Few here and there. Yeah. So that was five, I think I counted. So yeah. that's amazing. And you know, those are all free. You do not get paid to serve on those committees. This is strictly volunteer, um, and you know, just. The fact that you care so much and give back to the industry should tell you guys how much he cares and puts into his business that he does get paid for. And if you're wanting an inspector that's going to be there for you and, you know, has the experience and knowledge that you need to be able to, to be a great realtor and explain this process to your clients, then I suggest you give Lee a call for your next home inspection. No, I, I greatly appreciate yeah. it. I've always focused on, even if it's not, you know, part of an inspection, if you just have questions or anything going oh, you're on, if you're yes. listing, whatnot, just ask away. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, very true. So we are live on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter today, and we do a roll call. As you see, we have people chatting in. Uh, you know, we take roll call like in school when they would check of that off, the of attendance, to make sure our agents are are alive and present and paying attention because we always try to give valuable information out there to them. So thank you guys, roll call. And then we also have a lot of new people that chat in, which is interesting. It's from all kind of across the country. So you could be a overnight you hero. Never, you never know. <laughs> all right, so you ready to get started? That's sure. Okay, sure. great. We've got some great topics. <laughs> Okay, so we're here with Lee Warren, Prospect Inspector, and we are going to talk about some new things that are happening. So what's new with home inspections, Lee? Well, inspections, as everybody knows, everything's getting kind of crazy with the market. Uh, it's been very challenging, not only for agents and brokers, <laughs> but it's certainly been challenging for inspectors as well with option grades shortening and or going away in some situations oh, sure. and that type of stuff. So it's making it very interesting, plus with builders and the shortage of supplies, uh, windows, lumber prices going through the roof, it's made a lot of that a big challenge too, but the um, the big thing that's kind of coming down the pipe is from the Texas Real Estate Commission, we have a new set of standards of practice okay. coming through, and our standards of practice are a minimum set of standards that every inspector has to follow on every single inspection. So it's the rules that govern everything that we do on a home inspection. Now there's a lot of things that are being changed, and these changes go into effect on February 1st of next year, okay. um, so we have some time to kind of let the, the dust settle a little bit. Most of the changes are only going to be specific to inspectors, and, and you as, as agents are probably not going to feel a whole heck of a lot of changes on that. But there are three, three things um, that I, I think will probably have an impact on you. One, on the air conditioning system, typically when an inspector tests an air conditioning system, he takes temperature readings. What's the temperature going in versus what actually comes out on the other side? And that drop in temperature gives us an idea of the performance of the unit. Up until this point, there's never been a set range of numbers that has been deemed acceptable. And every inspector's kind of used a small variation, and this is 
caused some confusion um, over the years. So what we've done this, this time around is we actually set a specific number and it's any uh, temperature drop of 15 to 22 degrees is going to be deemed in the acceptable range or performing as intended range. So you can use that as a standard or we allow the opportunity for the inspector to choose some other definition, their own definition of how it's performing. So there's other industry standards to determine performance of an AC system. We allow the inspector to have that option, but they would have to explain in the report. But more specifically, it allows the 15 to 22 as a set range. The second thing is the arc fault or AFCI breakers. Arc faults have been in the code since 2003. The purpose of the arc fault is to detect if anything along the circuit could cause an arc or a spark or anything cause a fire if it detects it it will automatically shut the circuit down. Sim similar to what a GFCI does, but slightly different. So they've been in the code since 2003. They went into our standards uh, years back, but caused a lot of confusion. Um, people were having a real hard time educating people properly on what AFCIs were. And, and older houses with older wiring, you can't put AFCI breakers on because the wiring just won't handle it. So you had inspectors that were calling out AFCI deficiencies people trying to retrofit their house and they couldn't do it because the old wiring would trip the AFC breakers mm. over and over and over. Unfortunately, we have to put those back in the standards because they've been in the codes for almost 20 years now. But it's going to be an issue as far as explaining what AFCI is to a client, um, the pros, the cons, especially with older houses. So there's going to be an education uh, issue, I think, with that one, but hopefully we can kind of get some information out to people so that they have a better understanding. But I wanted to mention it here because, as, as I mentioned to Shauna before, a lot of my colleagues are very, very good at what they do and finding things, but every inspector is a little different on how they explain or convey what they find to a client. And if they're not conveying that properly, it can you know, unintentionally scare a client out of something that really isn't that big of an issue. Kind of like a doctor comes right. in and... Right. No, so and then the, the other, uh, another change is that the uh, gas supply system... So we used to have a separate section in the report for gas supply systems that got taken out years ago. We're actually putting that back in because there was a question and a concern about if there's a gas leak, where do you put it? Do you put it at the appliance? Do you put it in the plumbing section? So now there will be a specific gas supply section that the inspector will have to mention where the gas, the location of the gas meter, just like we have to mention the location of the water meter. <clears throat> but just so you know where, where that shutoff is. And um, if there's any gas leaks, they'll go in there. Now, an inspector may also put a gas leak in the appliance section, but at least there will be one central location for all um, gas-related items to be. And then the other part of the standards is the new form. There is a new form coming out, um, what we call the 7-6. From an agent's perspective, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference in it. There is some shuffling of a, of a few items in the, in the outline. The biggest thing that you might notice is the preamble is completely changed. It used to be a page and a half of gobbled legalese and gobbled book, um, but it's a, it's a lot more broken down now, and it's, it's written in, in, I think, more relatable language that people can understand, and so it'll be very visibly noticeable at the very front of the report to, that that preamble is different, so I think that'll help. Okay, well, good. So, you know, again, it's really important to have an inspector on your side that is familiar with with what's going on. I mean, I would say they all will have to, but it's similar as when our contract changes, you know, you have to go through the updates and, and know what that is so you can educate your clients. So, so that's really good. And you serve on these boards, so mm -hmm. you should really. Yeah, I, I know way more about this. these things than I, than I ever wanted to, but yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So that's coming February 1st. February 1st. Uh, okay. The form can be used on a voluntary basis as of September 1st, so some inspectors are using it now, but the mandatory use of the new form and the new standards is February 1st of next year. Okay, so temperature differential is kind of a thing mm -hmm. that you'll be looking for, the A... Um, AFCI. Our, yes. Our fault. And something with that is we always see, you know, this will come over to us in a repair amendment. They want this fixed. They want everything updated So because this is on the, the report. But that's pretty much a code standard, right? Right. Now, and, and keep in mind, the inspection report, the purpose of the inspection report is to inform the buyer about deficiencies in the house as they relate to our current standards and current codes. We're not code inspectors, but a lot of what we do is related to code. We're looking for things that could you know, cause potential safety and, and health issues and those types of things. But a lot of buyers will ask me, what should I ask for? What, what should I ask for? And you know, and that's, that's not for me to answer. And that's not for any inspector to answer. Our job is to tell you exactly what's going on with the house. The best person 
to answer what should you ask for and what, what should you not ask for is going to be you. It's going to be the agent. And I've always said that. And the reason is you know where you're at in that negotiating point. For instance, if a seller, if you lowball the living daylights out of the seller, obviously not a recent story, but if you lowball the seller, and the seller is going to be a lot less likely to make any concessions or any repairs. If you're twenty thousand dollars over, and there, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of competition for it, they may be more willing to to concede certain things. I don't, as the inspector, I don't have that information. I'm not privy to that. Your agent is. So if I tell you, well, you should ask for A, B, C, and D, and you lowball the living daylights out of something, that something that seller's going to say. Mm -hmm not going to happen. Right. Or in this market, mm -hmm. so I was going to go, I can turn around and dump that contract and get five other people yeah. right behind sure. you. Sure. Yeah. So it's not my place or an inspector's place to say what should or shouldn't be asked for. We're going to typically look for the health and safety issues, um, stuff that most sellers are going to realize they're probably going to have to fix no matter who uh, uh, purchases the house. But typically, you guys are the ones that should really best determine what's a good thing to ask for. Now, you can certainly ask the inspector you know, hey, can you clarify this statement or what, what specifically right. should I ask for and whatnot. A lot of times people will cut and paste out of the report. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of depends on the scenario. Right. And, you know, I'll remind you guys that this inspection is solely for the buyer's benefit. There's no pass or fail, and there's nothing that, that obligates a seller to even make a repair. Right. So, you know, we need to keep that in mind. A lot of times people just will send over a repair amendment and think the seller is, is liable to repair these things and they're not. So it's definitely something you should be having a conversation with your client prior to even entering into a contract. So, and doing some due diligence and looking at some of these major mechanicals, the HVAC age, the water heaters, and just, you know, condition of the home prior so you can kind of prepare them for what they may be faced with, so. And another thing I run into in this market is the time for the inspection is any time during the contract. I had an agent tell me yeah. that there was no auction period, so the buyer had no right to inspect the property and actually refuse the inspection, which is a breach of contract. There's a, the section, there's a section in the contract, um, I believe it's in the property condition section, that states that when you're under contract, the buyer has the right to inspect any time during the contract, not just the auction period. Mm -hmm. um, so there are 25 different outs on just about any contract and whatnot, but if if there's a situation where you don't have a, a, an option or you couldn't get the inspection done within the option period, you still have the right to do that option. Yeah, you know, um, what you're, you right. know what you're faced with. But that, you know, that's very true, and that's just not reading the contract, which that's a big no-no here. We, we, yeah, we and, and, contract, and you have to be careful right? because a lot of inspectors don't know what's in the contract. I'm kind of in a unique position where I've, you're a broker. I've, cause I've had to know all that information. Yeah. So when a listing agent tells me uh, they have no right to an inspection, they, they can't do it, it, it makes for an interesting conversation. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. So that's what's new with home inspections, and let's move on to our next topic. All right. Hey there, Shauna Quisto here with Lee Warren with Prospect Inspector. We are talking about inspections today on TNT, and I want to now talk about the walkthrough inspections prior to purchase. So, you know, we're all going through the uh, frenzy of just getting an offer accepted. And a lot of times, no option period, which is your right to terminate the contract. So a lot of times we want to know what we're faced with before we even put an offer in. So we've been asked by several if we could have you just kind of do a pre walkthrough mm -hmm. or a walkthrough inspection prior to purchase? And I'm interested to hear if we can do that or not. <laughs> the, the quick answer is no. Okay. Um, it's actually been a pretty big thing in the last year or so. Um, a lot of it's been going down in, in Houston and that area, but it, it's certainly been trickling its way up here. Mm -hmm. And again, with this market, you know, obviously the, the options tend to be very limited. And you're trying to get as much of an advantage for your client as possible, and you don't want to go under a contract for something that you, you know, the inspector is going to see within five minutes that something's really wrong. The problem with the walkthrough inspections: walkthrough inspections are not allowed, and they are subject to disciplinary action uh, by the Real Estate Commission. Um, from an inspector standpoint. From an inspector standpoint. Okay. However, there is a possible concern that if you suggest it or recommend it or try to get one from an agent perspective 
that you could be held under disciplinary action as well. Because oh. there's some liability from the agent that is, as well. Most okay. of it's going to be on the inspector. Okay. Um, Good to know. But the, the issue is any property that is subject to a sale, um, that you're basically evaluating the condition of that property, the standards of practice apply, complete and total, which means the full gamut of what, ha what is supposed to be inspected has to be inspected and a report has to be filed. Now, they can say, I only want you to look at the foundation and the roof, but not plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. That's fine. But they still have to go through the entire set of standards of practice for foundations and roofs, and they still have to file a com complete a full inspection report oh, wow. for that. Okay. So if they don't do that, they are in violation, and they can be subject to disciplinary action, which it could include suspension or revocation of the license. Wow. Okay. So we definitely don't want to do that. So what would you suggest? Because I'm not an HVAC expert right. or water heater expert. You know, it's, it's, it's hard with a lot of those because you are on such short time frames and that, that makes it, certainly makes it very mm -hmm. difficult. From an inspection side, it's really hard for us to go in and we can't do those walkthroughs because they're just not allowed. I know there's some people that are doing it, but they're, they're, they're kind of, Crossing. it's just a matter of time. They're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. And when they get caught, you know, who are they going to drag down with them is, is kind of what I'm concerned about yeah. too. So it does make your options limited. I always suggest to agents have established really good rapport and relationships with contractors, mm -hmm. plumbers, electricians, HVACs, general contractors. Um, I do a lot on the investment side as well, and a lot of times investors will bring their contractor with them on a house they're, they're seriously considering to not only get a, a basic assessment of what's going on, but a basic cost um, uh, assessment as well. That's a good idea, and I also think that gathering as much information up front as you can to see if they've had you know, if they've had service agreements on their HVAC and maintained, you know, regular servicing of these items, that's going to tell you, too, that at least how much care has been has been given to those, you know, mechanical okay. units. So, okay, so what have we learned here? You cannot do this, you guys. So let's be careful. Let's not suggest it. Let's not put our inspectors under the gun and get upset with them when they say they can't do it. Just know it. there's a lot of liability there and none of us want to lose our license. Because so. the other liability from that is if you do this walkthrough inspection, you get it under contract, and you don't actually have a full inspection on the property, from the, the, the real question becomes from the buyer's perspective, what, what happens to them? Mm -hmm. So if they get a, a preconceived idea that they had this walkthrough inspection and in their mind, do they know it's a walkthrough or do, and do they just think it's an inspection of the mm -hmm. property? And so they go, they buy the house, and all of a sudden there's some big problem, and who are they going to go after? That person that inspected, and probably the agent, because who suggested, oh, this is all you need, you just yeah. need this walkthrough inspection, and that's it. So well, that's, that's where you get dragged that, into that as well. Well, you're my agent. I had no idea. Right. So, yeah. So let's be careful with that. All right, great information. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Sounds good. Quisto Real Estate here. Shauna with the Quisto Real Estate here <laughs> with Lee Warren, Prospect Inspector. We're talking about inspectors to inspections today. We're learning lots of great things. And something that comes up all the time that affects us is attending the home inspection. Should we attend? Should we not? Should our buyers be there or not? Do you want them there? So we're going to dive in and talk about this right now. And I think you have some reasons why uh, realtors should attend the home inspection. Right? Yeah, this, this kind of came up because there's there's some brokerages out there that are specifically telling their agents do not go to the home inspection that it's a liability. Um, personally, from, from my perspective, I think it's a liability for an agent not to go to yeah. the home inspection. As I mentioned before, I have a lot of really good colleagues in this industry that, that are very good at what they do and they can find a lot of things that they're supposed to find. Right. However, what really sets them apart is how they convey what they find to a client. Mm -hmm. So to that end... You, have, you as the agent have a relationship and the background with that client to know if they're an engineer or if they had a house last year that flooded you know, in the, in the snowmageddon or anything like that and what their, their hot buttons are. We have no idea what their hot buttons are going to be. We right. can watch their reactions as we're talking to them, but we don't know what their hot buttons are going to be. So we may go through and, and we're geeks. We accept that we're geeks. We talk in geek terms and sometimes we don't think about, hey, we just threw out five acronyms that they don't know what it is, but right. in our mind we think they do. Um, 
you have that better rapport with them than we do to know that they're deer in the headlights right now where we an inspector may not recognize that. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're not there to be that buffer in between the inspector and the buyer, that can cause a buyer to back out of a contract or get freaked out when there's really nothing to worry about. So I think it's, it's a huge thing for the agent to be there, not only to make sure their client has a clear understanding of what's going on, but also when the, when the buyer, if you're not there, the buyer's gonna come back to you and make that call as soon as, before they've even left the house and go, I wanna ask for this and this and this and this and this. And you're going, oh my Lord, the, the house is in horrible shape, when in actuality it's just part of what they heard. Right. And then when you're trying to create a, a repair amendment, it's a lot easier to do that if you were there for the inspection to listen to what was actually conveyed as opposed to what a buyer may have actually heard. Yeah, and most inspectors, you know, at the end of the report will be there ready to discuss that with you and your client and talk through them. So I think it's, you know, we always say, go with your client. Mm -hmm. Because if not, and I can tell, tell you, a lot of times when things go sideways during this part, it's because you didn't attend, the agent didn't attend to guide them and tell them, you know, we're not inspectors, so we can't tell them what to do, but we can point out, you know, one important thing that I always say is that the Trek standard is for the inspectors to put everything in there and whether it's a code violation or not. If it's not up to code, it's marked as deficient. It doesn't mean it's not working, it just means it's not up to the, the code. Is that Right, and in fact, we changed that. It used to say, uh, for those who have been around for a while, it used to say, in need of repair. That was how it was actually yeah. worded in the report, and we changed that because just because it may be wrong doesn't necessarily mean it has to be repaired. Mm -hmm. We have to call it out as a deficiency, but it doesn't mean that it has to be repaired. So we changed that specifically so that people weren't being, felt like they were being forced to repair something. Right. So the, the realtor should be there. What if the buyer can't be there and the realtor's there? Well, it's still, maybe you record it, maybe you FaceTime them, do whatever you, yeah. you can to make sure that they are getting this information. Do you mind if the, you know, if they can't attend, if they call you and kind of go over oh, absolutely. another I, time? I typically will tell my clients, if you can't be there, that's fine. I will call you when I'm done and we can verbally walk through everything. And mm -hmm. I, I, I will do that before I send them the report. The reason being, the reports are legal documents. They're written as such. They're very dry, yeah. very direct. It makes the house sound 10 times worse than it actually is. Yes. So I want to have a conversation with them before I actually send them the report. Because if I just send them the report, nobody will ever buy a house. Yeah. Because it will scare the living daylight out of you. I tell them, have a glass of wine when you read through it because it's going to be a lot of information. Yeah, a lot of reading. But if you have any questions, the inspector is not just there for the inspection. They're there afterwards too. So feel free to ask questions, email them, text them, call them, whatever the case may be. Um, if you have questions and concerns, this is a huge, it's a huge purchase in their life. Yeah. One of the biggest investments they'll ever make. So we, we understand that as well. So it's, it's important for them to understand. Yeah. Now from my side, I also want to be cautious of buyers that want to come for the whole inspection throughout the inspection process. Yeah. Some inspectors will welcome that and say that's okay. But the vast majority of inspectors typically do not want the buyers there for the whole inspection. Number one, it's a distraction. You're paying me to inspect the house and focus on the problems of the house. If I'm turning around and answering a question every five minutes of, hey, what's that? What are you writing down? What are you taking a picture of? Mm -hmm. I can possibly miss something that I really shouldn't be. So that's one side of it. Yeah. Another side of it is whoever lets that person in the house is responsible for that person. So if, I, if I'm inspecting a house, specific, most specifically, if it's occupied house and I'm inspecting it and my buyer shows up, I'm not going to let them in until I've told them. And I, I tell them at the beginning, hey, come at eight, if you come at 10 o'clock, I'll be ready to walk you through at that time. If you show up at 8, I'm not going to let you in the door. Mm -hmm. It's not because I'm being rude. It's because this is somebody's home. And if I let you in, I am responsible for anything that you do in that home. Mm -hmm. And I have seen, I've been doing this for a long time, I've seen people going through people's clothes, I've seen people let kids up in the kids' room and play yes. with toys, go through the drawers and the fridge and the pantry and stuff like that. People have broken things, they'll get hurt. And they blame um, you. And they blame me. <laughs> and because in the end, they're going to look at that super box and who let those people in the house. And my name's the last one on there because I opened the door. So that's a really good point that if you've scheduled your inspection and the inspection's on this date, you should be relaying the information to your your client that you will also be attending and your client. So almost do it separate. Like this mm -hmm. is a separate showing and we're going to be there for this amount of time because, you know, they're then 
approving it and they know yep. what's happening. So it's just really covering your your behind. And it's, and it's unfortunately it's caused problems before where a buyer yeah. shows up even like two hours before I told them to and it's an occupied house and I won't let them in. And again, it's not because I'm being rude, but let's say if they go up and down the stairs and they trip and fall, you know, the, the realtor association is going to call me and say, well, how did they fall? I don't know. Yeah. I wasn't watching. Them. Oh, so you let somebody in the house you weren't following. Now I'm going to lose my super key and I'm, I'm done with yeah. my business. It, yeah. There's a huge liability there. It's no different than if you, as you as an agent, if you're going to do a showing, do you just go in, open the door, and let the, the buyers roam free throughout the house? Of course you don't, because you're responsible for anything they do over there. It's the same thing for us. Mm -hmm. We may let them in. We may be in the house, but we're focused on 20 million other things. I'm not focused on what they're doing walking around the house right. and looking at the bedrooms. Right. Okay. Well, good information. Now we know everyone should be attending the home inspection at the end, basically for the, I would call it the walkthrough Absolutely. portion of the inspection at the end so you don't distract them that you are there present with your client to avoid you know huge liability issues so great information okay. all right next topic mm -hmm. Shauna Aquisto, broker of Aquisto Real Estate here with Lee Warren talking all about inspections today. Lee is with Prospect Inspector and he has been around for a long time, is great um, with our industry as, in, as a whole, he gives back to our industry in so many ways. And you know, I want to talk about right now, I know I've seen a lot of crazy things over the years in showing homes, but I bet you have as well. And I invite you guys to all give Lee a follow on social media, especially Facebook, because he puts these photos out there of things that he comes across sometimes, and it's so funny. And it just kind of lightens up, you know, this daunting inspection process. So it's really, it's really fun to see. So um, I know it's hard to come up with, like, one thing. So let's come up with a couple of things that you, the craziest things that you've seen during an inspection. Well, in, on my Facebook, Facebook's where I put most most of the stuff, and I, yeah. I do it in such a way that I'm, I'm not there to say, use me, use me, use my services, whatnot. I've, no, never, I've never been that, that guy. Right. I try to look at it as more of an educational opportunity, mm -hmm. um, so that if people want to share it with, with their friends or clients or whatnot, that they can, it doesn't feel like they're, you know, and you know how's your car's, uh, or your car's extended warranty doing? I don't want it to feel like that. So, um, I try to keep it educational, but sometimes it's, it can be funny. Um, yeah. I've been doing this for, for quite some time. You do see some, some goofy stuff. Um, some things I can't aren't really appropriate for, for this setting. Well, I sent it. one to Omkar. I'm going to see if we can share it. Um, the last one that I sent you. If not, we can go through a couple of these that are kind of kind of funny. Um, yeah, let's look at this one first. Well, first off, guys, um, we should all know that when you are going to have a home inspection on your listing, you need to talk to your seller and say, hey, the inspector's got to be able to get in there and check the attic space or any mechanicals that could be in the garage, your electrical panels, sprinkler system, whatever that may be. I mean, come on. Yeah, because we're not allowed to move anything. This. So an inspector yeah. comes in, you know, if there's something in front of an electrical panel, we're not allowed to move that because it's a huge liability for us. And I know that sounds like a silly thing, but I've actually run across where people will put, intentionally put a broken table in front of an electrical panel you pick up that table, move, and one of the legs falls off, and it's no longer a $30 oh, Walmart geez. table. It's a priceless family heirloom that I'm now responsible to, to replace. Yeah. People do that. They set inspectors up all the time. So as a result, it's not that the inspector's being lazy. It's just we're not allowed to move any of their personal items that's there. Yep. So as a listing unit, you got to make sure that your clients are prepared for that. Um, I actually have a, a PDF um, that is, has a list of things for listing agents to give to their sellers to prepare them for inspection day. Oh, it's a, kind of a breakdown. Have. Yeah. Um, so if you remind me, I will email that to you if, okay. if you want. Um, but you can just put that in your listing packet so they can be ready for inspection day and whatnot. But yeah, you gotta everything's gotta be accessible, and people don't always think about you know the garage. That's a big right. one. Garage and the attic are the two big ones. That was funny because I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. You're gonna sell your home, and this is what it looks like. Yeah. So, all right, let's go to the next one, Omkar of the vent. This one kind of cracked me up. Oh. Is this like a wall decor or what is this? Yeah, this is it's so well, what is that behind the vent? You know, I think it was uh, I think it was a clean out. Um, 
and they just kind of covered it up. They used a, a vent register to kind of cover it up. And this was actually, there was a, I think this was in a room that had no other AC vent. It was like a, a sunroom um, that they built off of the outside. Um, Nobody will notice. Back just wall. put this yeah, up there. Yeah, just, just put this up there. Be fine. <laughs> we can count it as square footage. Abs it's air conditioned. It's air conditioned space. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So funny. All right. And then, Omkar, I'm not sure if you can share the last one that I emailed you. I don't know if it's really appropriate, but if. <laughs> We'll give them a second. If not, it's okay. But I do see all sorts of stuff. You can go to Lee's. You can go to Lee's Facebook page. Yeah, and it's, see it. it's it's on hilarious. There. But um, it, a lot of what I post on there is new construction, um, things that I find in new construction. I, mean, I, can, I can post all sorts of stuff on pre-owned stuff, but new construction tends to be more comical to me because the builders will sit and tell uh, buyers, "You don't need an inspection. They'll do everything they can to talk them out." Oh, yeah. Like, we have our own inspectors. We hire a third-party inspector. Plus, there's a city inspector that you're absolutely wasting your money to have an inspection done. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a house. I turn on the shower upstairs, and the water comes through the light fixture in the kitchen. Um, you turn on the faucet on the outside, and no water comes out of the faucet, but it shoots through the through mm -hmm. the brick. Um, I've had air conditioning systems that weren't even connected, so the water's dripping onto the attic ceiling. Um, a lot of times in your uh, shower pans. They will actually, when they're washing the, the grout and everything, when they do the tile shower, yeah, this happens a lot. it goes into the P-trap, which is in the concrete, in the foundation itself, goes in the P-trap and up and out. Well, they don't run enough water through, and in that P-trap, the concrete solidifies, and it completely clogs that thing up. And inside of about three months, you get a little bit of hair or whatnot, and your drain is completely clogged oh up. Oh, my gosh. And the only way to fix it is to drill into the slab and redo that P-trap. That's so, crazy. So if you have a client that is going to build a proper a, a home yes you can get a third party inspector to come out and don't be deterred by them saying you know don't let them do that to you and yep. kind of bully you into not getting that because you have the right to do that some i don't remember who the builders <laughs> were exactly but there were a couple that said you could not do that but there are and there are others there's there are a couple that say you know, you cannot have an inspection mm -hmm. there's some that say you can only inspect once throughout the entire process yeah and then there are others that say no no we welcome third-party inspectors absolutely yeah. love to have them and then the day that you want to have the inspection then they say your inspector just needs to sign this form mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like much to a buyer but the form states that you have to have two million dollars of, of insurance which is ridiculous um, the state requires a hundred thousand dollars there's what are we? There's really? nothing invasive that we're doing that's going to cause two million dollars worth of damage. But they're doing it to. They're basically putting all these restrictions on to try and prevent inspections from happening mm -hmm. without saying we're preventing inspections from happening. But another one says you can only inspect between seven and three Monday through Friday. The builder rep has to be there the entire time. You can't communicate to your client without copying the builder on anything to do with the house. Um, you cannot go on the roof. You can't pull a cover on an electrical panel. And oh, by the way, if you get hurt injured or killed even through the gross negligence of the builder wow. you waive all your rights to hold the builder accountable okay well yeah. so they do try to try to sway you against yes. doing that but you know this is your this is a huge purchase you know and i think yep. you have the right to do what you feel comfortable with doing so just know when you go to a builder with a client and that's important that you ask them how that process works in the beginning before you sign a contract Absolutely. so okay well thank you we're going to wrap everything up my pleasure all right that's a wrap you guys we're here with lee with prospect inspectors gave us tons of great information we talked about what's new with the home inspections if you're allowed to do a walkthrough inspection prior to purchase attending the home inspection, who should attend and why. And then we, you know, talked about a couple of crazy things that uh, Lee has experienced over the years in, home, you know, conducting a home inspection. And if you want to see more, go to his Facebook page. Just go to Lee Warren and give him a follow. It's hilarious. He's got great stuff. Very educational, but also fun in seeing some of these crazy things. You think, really? And yes. <laughs> Really, it really yeah. happened. So thanks for no, joining us Thank today, you. and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Weekly workshop at noon. Oh, sorry. One more thing. We have our agent weekly workshop today at, at uh, 10 o'clock. So all of you hop on there and uh, join us today, and we're going to collaborate together and 
and uh, have our weekly workshop. So, all right, see you then. <laughs>